Recruiting day is finally here, and we have all the information on the latest additions to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I'm Jimmy Scheel, joined by someone who 20 years ago was a big addition to the Husker program. You can say 20 years. Tommy Frazier. That's, that's, that's not a long time. I'm going to say 20, say a, a, while, few, a few years back or a while back, not 20. <laughs> when there was still color TV. Yeah, that's not too far. We had color TV then. Yeah, so. yes, yeah, color TV was here before a long time before that. Yeah, I'm well, just making it seem. Now, uh, you can say back when Johnny Rogers was being recruited. Is, that was uh, old. Then, now that's old. That's, that's when old. Color, that's when color TV <laughs> probably decided to start coming in or not. Yeah, I think so. I've seen some of Johnny's pictures at Nebraska, and he didn't even have a face mask. <laughs> well, that's I, I won't go that far. No. <laughs> but a few years back, Tommy mm -hmm. uh, gave his yes to Coach Osborne and Coach Steele, and. Uh, and that was kind of before the early 90s, before, you know, the recruiting cottage industry of what it is now. Right. But a few recruitments were so big that you heard about them with no internet. And yours uh, was one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you remember from that, uh, getting recruited out of Florida? Well, I, I just remember the, uh, all the coaches, the last minute push the week before. You know, at the, at Nebraska was the last recruitment I took. But then when I got back on that Sunday... From Nebraska, just all the phone calls that were coming in from schools that hadn't visited, was trying to get their, just trying to get their last yeah, pitch something in. Doesn't work out. You know, no, not even that. I'm trying to still sell their still a school about what what I can accomplish at their schools, and I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of these a lot of these schools a lot of these kids went through it. Because one thing that happens after that Sunday, Sunday night when it goes Monday, they can't be contacted by any college. You know, so you so coaches are trying to get their last minute sell in to get you to come to their school. So it was it was recruiting process people. Who who haven't been recruited think is a, think is an exciting time because they get all these <laughs> top name coaches call them get to go all look at five visits or unofficial visit, but it really gets to be a pain. Oh, I, I because now it, it, it basically engulfs everything you do, all your free time to where you literally have to say enough, mm -hmm. and that's why I think you're starting to see a lot more kids starting to commit earlier. Mm -hmm. Just so they can slow the process down. Then because they commit doesn't mean they're gonna stop, but you're trying to slow yeah, the process down. Stop. Because once you commit, the schools that aren't the big name schools back off. And so now you can limit the schools that you talk to. And so but it's an exciting time for these young men. When did you give your verbal? Or did you did you give like a I d I didn't give a verbal commit until the day I, I told I signed my, my scholarship. So like February third, fourth, whatever. So whatever, whatever, whatever the day was, where I was able to sign my scholarship. That was the day I let, let Nebraska know. That was the day I let all other schools know that I wasn't coming to them. Uh -huh. And simply because it, it, when you give a commitment, schools still gonna call you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I and, and I really didn't know where I was gonna go until I woke up that morning. Wow. You know, so it's one of those deals to where I'm a firm believer. In don't commit to anyone because there's always somebody who come in with with the, the cake and ice cream mm -hmm. that's going that can pull you away, and then you, then you're upsetting other people. Just go through the whole process and then, and then, and make your announcement like a lot of kids did today. Make their announcements on signing day. Yeah, but Nebraska obviously was one of the leaders for your services at the time. Do you remember anything funny that maybe some of the west, the southern schools or western schools might have tried to use against Nebraska? No, I, the schools that I had on my list really wasn't western or southern, more the Midwest, or Midwest or or the Southeast Conference. You know, one school, I, my, one of my schools was Clemson, and then the other was Syracuse. Mm -hmm. But other schools more in the Midwest with Notre Dame, Colorado, and Nebraska. You know, so the Western schools had already knew that I wasn't going that far west. Mm -hmm. And the Southern schools knew that I wanted to get out of the state of Florida, get out of the state. I wanted to go see something different. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was one of those deals where Rick Stock still at Clemson, you know, I was loving the death. I still taught him the day. Mm -hmm. You know, he really had made a, a serious pitch at the end. And people thought it came down between Nebraska and Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. No, it was Nebraska and Clemson. But by Notre Dame being the big the big school on the block, the big school at the time, everyone thought that Notre Dame was my top two, but they really weren't. Mm -hmm. So the Tony Rice effect from a few years earlier, Notre Dame probably was trying to sell that. But I think they'd be Rick Meyer. So they had been kind of, it was Rick they Meyer, kind of changed. Bettis. Yes. They had yes. changed a little bit. They had a rocket there at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, for signing day today for Nebraska, Tommy mentioned some guys made their decisions today uh, in favor of Nebraska. Some not. But one guy who uh, decided for Nebraska today out of uh, Illinois, Vincent Valentine, who chose Nebraska over Florida. You got a chance to look at the 6'4", 300-pounder. What would you think of him? Well, I think he's, he's going he's gonna to help. He's going to help. He's going to help this football team because the one thing we've been missing are big physical bodies. You know, we might have big kids but aren't very physical. But this is an athletic kid who's big, and he's going he's gonna to fill in and, and compete early. 
and, and it made things tougher for teams to, to, to not depend on him. So I think I think that was a big a big hit for us on the defensive side of the ball. And I'm not 100% sure Nebraska would have pursued him as hard if they were still in the Big 12, whereas they were, as you mentioned, kind of bigger kids that may have not have been as physical. Right. Crick and Steinpooler, I think, for what Bo wanted to do way back when, were perfect. 6'6", six, six, more pass rushers mm -hmm. than, you know, the run stuffers. But this Valentine, and I don't want to get too carried away with videos, because one thing about recruiting, you can watch a kid's video, video to right. death and think, oh, God, that's the next, the, the second coming. But, but, the, but, the, but the one thing I, I, I can say about defensive linemen, if they're physical in high school, they're going to be physical in college. That's the one position you can bank on by the way they played in high school is how they're going to play in college, especially, especially in bowl scheme mm -hmm. and what they're trying in the Big Ten. And so so I, I'll, say that, I'll say that he will come in and make a, a strong push for playing time. And we need for him to come and make a strong push for playing time because we saw what happened when Crick went out last year and you, and you brought, in, brought in some other guys. And Stein Cooler wasn't a guy that can hold up consistently mm -hmm. versus 300-pound offensive linemen. You know, so and because he wasn't 300 pounds himself. Mm -hmm. But when you got a guy who's 6'4", 300, 320, 330, all you need for him to do is sink his hips and, 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 and pile up and pile, mm -hmm. a whole, pile a whole line scrimmage up yeah. and, and keep him off your linebackers. And, and so that was a big plus for us. And they also got another defensive tackle, Aaron Curry, who might be a little bit more of a project, but another guy who might push for playing time. And out of the high school kids, mm -hmm. this might be the gem, Greg McMullen. 6'5", 250, out of the state of Ohio, mm -hmm. who had an Ohio State offer. And he's the one who I think might be able to come off the edge. Well, then, and that's, that, then once again, you got a big guy, 6'5", who can play the run, but also rush. And that's what we lack right now. You know, I understand we say, well, we have this player, that player. But a guy who can, on our defense ends that we have right now, they're either specialty, specialists in rushing or specialists in playing, playing the run. We need a guy who can do board both. We don't need to keep inter having interchanging guy with one guy for this down. Mm -hmm. We need a guy who can do it all. And hopefully he's the one that that that's going to reverse that trend and say he can play every down. And that's what we need an every down defense in. Yeah, you're watching Tommy Frazier's X's and O's recruiting special. And with Greg McMullen, he has a, a basketball background. So you hope the footwork's there and he's right. able to be able to play the run as well as the pass. And the biggest thing... I think defensively what they're trying to do in the recruiting class, Coach Pelini, was linebackers. I think they're a year late because they should have had a recruiting class of four linebackers last year instead of just one. But it's water but, under the bridge. But, 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 you, but you also got to understand the reason why they probably didn't because they felt that his system, he can go anywhere and play it no matter what conference they played in. Mm -hmm. Well, the Big Ten showed them that, hey, we need to get three big line, three true mm -hmm. linebackers in there and one or two of them being able to get out of Mm -hmm. Split out and play a receiver. The coaches are stubborn, and, and so and so he realized that. Wait a minute, we need to go recruit this kid, and that's why you saw him go out and recruit more linebackers because they really don't. Have, and that's the one. That's the one position that truly that all these guys that are coming in should come in here with the mindset that I'm going to play. I might not start, but I'm going to play a lot this year mm -hmm. because the depth at that yeah. position is not there. Getting into that too <clears> deep, and they do have three seniors in that linebacking right. core. But it's just, you know, I think you could have looked ahead. And you know, as a coach, you're trying to look ahead. How many guys are we lose in this year? Okay, we need to get guys in the pipeline. So he has them in the pipeline now. I just right. wish there would have been that push last year. But the very first linebacker who uh, committed to Coach Planning, I believe in the summer of 2010, um, Michael Rose out of Kansas City, could have also gone to USC. So I don't want to always buy into, oh, right. I watched their film and he's a beast. Right. But the offer list is, you know, when you put those two things together, Michael Rose out of Kansas City. What do you think of him? Well, I think I think he's a, I think he's a, when you when you got a USC recruiting, that says a lot because USC very rarely goes out of their their territory out yeah, of California. They don't need to leave. You know, they don't leave. They don't, they don't need to leave the, the West Coast to go recruit because they have all those kids in their backyard. And for them to go halfway across the country to recruit a kid, let you know there's something special about this kid. Mm -hmm. And so so obviously. You can you can chalk one up the bowl because they were on a kid that that USC was on, and people also don't compare to USC. Well, USC is kind of the standard, a, a standard, and they're kind of they what won ten games last year, mm -hmm. and on probation, mm -hmm. you know. So they have so USC has done a great job in recruiting, and 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 bowl went in, and, and 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 won that battle, and we don't I don't know how he's gonna pan out when he gets here, mm -hmm. but as you can say, chalk that's that's one victory. Yeah. 
for Nebraska because eventually those two teams could play in the Rose Bowl. Yeah. If both teams win their conference championships, they could face each other in the Rose Bowl. Mm-hmm. So you never know. Yeah. Rose was one of four linebackers. There's uh, three other guys who I think project as a little more. You can bank on a red shirt, but Rose, I think, is the most right. um, ready to go next year. Uh, moving into the secondary, we talked, well, Zaire Anderson, we talked about last week, the mm-hmm. junior college linebacker. So out of those two, I think, you know, two think, or four are going to see the field. I think two or four should see the field. And I think you, I think you have to go into spring spring camp saying, hey, you guys that are here, if you, if you don't show that you can play, you might, have a, you might not get an opportunity to fall. Because mm-hmm. so two or the four should see the field next year. And I don't. And I know that we have guys on the roster right now, but based on what I saw and based on the depth that I saw last year, it's going to take a whole lot <laughs> for me, a whole lot of improvement and a whole lot of, of playing time for me to say, wait a minute, wow, these guys improved that much in the offseason mm-hmm. to where we don't need to play these guys. But I just don't see that happening. Mm-hmm. So so you need to play two, two of these linebackers. Yeah, the one hope is that, you know, the coaches were getting you, used to the new system and now the players kind of know what they're going to do. But as Tommy mentioned, it – going to look like for a lot of improvement and moving back into the secondary we talked a lot last week about a guy who fortunately is here this spring Mo Cisse someone who was a all-conference USA as a freshman could have gone to open went the junior college route and he'll be here in the spring and how big is that for him to be here for spring ball well it's big for him because he can compete now he can see he can go out there and compete every day during spring he's here working out with the team he's he's building relationships with the guys so the guys see what he what he does and how he plays so that's big for him. And I wish Zaire could have been here because they, I think in my, they're going to depend on him more than they think they are mm-hmm. because he has that experience over all the other guys that they signed. He has more experience of playing football than, than the backers that we have now at mm-hmm. linebacker. You know, so I think, I, I think CSA is going, to, is going to benefit from that. And I won't be surprised come out of spring, you don't see him as one of the starting corners. Yeah, he's 6'2", 190. So he uh, has the physical tools, but as as you know, he can look like Tarzan, play, play like Jane, look like Tarzan, play like Jane. And, and I want to say about all the recruits that we have, I'm not jumping the gun until I see how they perform and they mm-hmm. play at University of Nebraska versus the teams that they play. Mm-hmm. We, they can look all world versus Nebraska, mm-hmm. and they can look all world against versus when he played at Memphis. But how are they going to look when they have to step on the field and play the schedule that Nebraska plays? Mm-hmm. And when they get in the big team play, that's what I want to see. Rounding out the defensive recruits, recruits were a couple of cornerback safety projects: Leroy Alexander, mm-hmm. Alonzo Moore out of uh, Louisiana. So there was, you know, a good mix of some, you know, really high end four star right. guys and some other guys like, okay, we can we can take that guy and develop him. Right, and and that's and that's what you want, and that's what I think that as a, as a as a program we got away from. Developing guys, getting keeping the pipeline going, starting them off. They come in here with a red shirt and they go up as and, and they senior, junior, senior. They stay playing. Mm-hmm. We got away from that. I think now what they're trying to do is come back to that to where they're getting guys so they can develop them and, and bring up and, and keep that tradition and keep it going to where there is no drop off. To where the last couple of years there's a drop off when you, when the starter went out, you saw a drop off in the backup, and that's what we can't afford to do, especially being limited to where we are. You know, you can only go off on the program. In the history for so long, yeah, you gotta get guys to start producing. You gotta, you gotta have, you have, you gotta have success stories at every position. Well, get, look at this guy; he came here as scholarship redshirt. Now look at him; he, he's he made it through. And now he's been drafted in the NFL. That's what we need. Yeah, that's a great point about the state of Nebraska. The, the football program has on match tradition, tied for the most national championships since 1970. But Nebraska doesn't have that population base, right? So at some point, you got to get everything you can out of what you bring in, and you can't. You can't. Have you can't miss. It's it's hard for us to miss mm-hmm. than other universities, mm-hmm. and so the guys that we are starting to bring in now, they can't be guys that we missed on. These mm-hmm. got to be guys that got eventually come here and contribute at a high level. Now flipping sides of the ball to the sexy side of the ball and all that right, sexy. <laughs> Uh, out of the 17 recruits, I believe there are only five or six offensive. And last week we touched on Tommy Armstrong a little bit. Um, what do you think? You're the quarterback. Well, I think, I think he's a guy that, that, that eventually can come in here and compete. I don't necessarily know if he's a guy that can come in and compete right away. Simply because of just some of the film that I watch, he's, there's, still, there's still some things that he has a mechanic-wise and reading defenses and, and learning the system. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hamper his, his growth. He's very athletic, and he can do some things. 
But for people to have the, the mindset that he can come in here as a true freshman in this system and, play, and, and have a starting job, I think it's asinine. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those deals where it's good to have him because he's going to put pressure on everyone else, on the other guys that are that quarterback. But I think that we, we need for him to come in and slowly grow. Mm -hmm. That means if we're playing, if he's coming here playing this year, that means they hadn't recruited mm -hmm. the best the year before. Mm -hmm. And so, so yes, I would, yes, I would love for him to come here and, and compete. Mm -hmm. But for for saying that he's going to be the starter by midseason, this and that, no, I I hope that's not the case. Yeah, I, I hope they have enough guys on the roster right now with the red shirts and 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 and, the, and scholarship guys that can come and they can say, hey, man, you're not going to just go come in and take our job. We're going to compete. Mm -hmm. You have enough depth there. Uh, I think there probably are some high school quarterbacks who probably could come in and really push the guys that are here, but. From what I saw on the film, he doesn't jump out with having like that great strength. Right. And defensively, they didn't really miss on a whole lot of guys. They got pretty much who they were going after. But offensively, unfortunately, I don't they had a few misses and, and, and that happens. Mm -hmm. One guy I think who really jumped out was Devin Fuller, a uh, four or five star athlete, very similar to Denard Robinson. Mm -hmm. When you watched his film, his plays with his legs jumped out at you. And I told, and I, his name came up last when mm -hmm. I say the one guy that they did. And they, they really can design want. enough plays around that. And to me, he, to me, he's another Jamal Turner. To where you, if you get both those guys on the field on different side of the ball, or even the same side of the ball, you know, you got two speedy receivers that can make things happen. Mm -hmm. Slot guys, they don't need to be on the outside. Put them in the slot and put them and get, and you can get the matchups to where they're versus the safety or versus the linebacker. That's what mm -hmm. you want. Mm -hmm. And to me, they hit gold on that. I don't know if he's going to pan out, but just based on what I saw on his high school film, he has a good chance. Along with, well, if Jamal turned the light bulb, finally clicks on and say, mm -hmm. hey, I could be good in this conference. Mm -hmm. Now you got two good slot guys that can make, that can make mm -hmm. Nebraska offense better. Mm -hmm. and I mentioned Devin Fuller. Devin Fuller uh, ended up going to UCLA when a lot of people thought it might, if it wasn't Rutgers, it might be Arizona with uh, Coach right. Rodriguez. But he, he said, I can – Go play pro style quarterback. So I think he's a defensive back within two years. Oh yeah, he, yeah. They missed. We'll move on. But that's one guy. Him, but, but hey, it, it happens. You, but the quarterback but, position in general, they really need for numbers wise. They have two scholarship quarterbacks, so they really needed one. I was kind of hoping two. What, but, what but, thoughts but, on but, numbers? But for me, yes, you would like to have a, 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 a one or two scholarship quarterbacks. But when you, but when you're talking about the style of offense that you're running, it's hard to keep that going. Mm -hmm. You know, but when they talk about Brandon, I think his name Brandon Marshall, Millet South, who ran yeah. spread offense. He had Ron Kellogg Jr. there, who had, who proved in the spring game last year that he, he has some ability. He can he, handle the. Then you, you, you have Brianna, you have Taylor. I think you, I think you have some, a good stable of quarterback. Then you have to walk on coming. I think he came in from Tyson Brock. Tyson Brock from last year. From, from then last they have another year, one. They have another walk on. So I think they have enough in the in the pool okay. to where to where you can't miss on all of them. Mm -hmm. One or two of those guys eventually going to yeah. step up and say, "Hey, I'm gonna be a quarterback." So they have three scholarship quarterbacks starting in August, right? And, and that's not and that's not bad. That's not a bad deal, knowing that hey, you want the guy you brought in this year, hopefully redshirt, and hopefully one of those backup quarterbacks, the, yeah. the walk ons, and can, can, can step up and say, "You know what? I don't want you to play. I know that you're going. Yeah. You're here to take my job, but I want you to sit back and learn." Yeah, jog my memory. Unfortunately, in the ninety. Uh, Four season uh -huh. when the Nebraska quarterback position had some injuries and Matt Turman became a legend. How many starters? And we only had well in that year we only had. If I remember to say we only had two scholarship quarterbacks. Just you and Brooke. It was me and Brooke. Remember Ben Brooks, who they recruited with me. He eventually transferred down to Kansas, I think it was. So it was just me and Brooke. Me then you had then you had Matt Turman, and then when I went out, then they okay. had, they, brought, they brought a couple guys over from defense who played a quarterback in, in the high school. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that year we. Only had well, you know, well, maybe talk about Frank Tony Brown. had moved already. Tony had moved over. We okay. had a couple of young guys with red shirt that were on scholarship, but uh -huh. but one, but the yeah, actually so the guess, scholarship that was back up one and two was just mean bro. So Terman was number three going into the year. Terman was number three. And he was going, fine. But, Terman was you know, number three going into the year. Yeah. yeah, but injuries can happen, and Nebraska was fortunate last year that Taylor never got hurt playing almost every snap. Right. right. You know, so, I, so, so they've got so, another one to put in the mix. So that's why I think when, you, when people make such a big deal on having this many scholarship quarterbacks, having that many scholarship quarterbacks doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing. Mm -hmm. Because now if you have that many scholarship quarterbacks, you might be wasting a scholarship on a player who may never play here. 
Yeah. You can go use that scholarship on, on someone else mm-hmm. that could play here. You know, so the, I mean, if you got three guys on scholarship, that's probably the right number. Yeah, and speaking of misses, probably the biggest miss for the recruiting class was the brother of current Husker Todd Pete. Right. Uh, a high high value Andres Pete out of Arizona chose to go to Stanford. Best of luck to him. We'll move on. An offensive guy that uh, could see the field next year, wide receiver Jordan Westerkamp uh, out of Illinois. Talk a little bit about Westerkamp. Well, I think he has a size and a speed and a hands to, to make, come in and make an impact. That's good for a receiver. And, 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 and that's, what, that's what you need. I don't think we have anyone on, stat, on, on, on the current roster who has the size, the speed, and the hand. They might have the speed and the hands, but might not have the size. Or they might have the size mm-hmm. and the hands, but not, might not have the speed. You know, so I think he's the one, the one guy that that fits that mold to where you can put him out there, throw the ball to him, he makes somebody miss and take it to the house. I think that was an upgrade because every what, what we what we started the season with last year with a senior Brandon Kenning, he didn't perform mm-hmm. as a true senior, and so we had to play a lot of younger guys and they missed and and they weren't prepared for that. And I can I guarantee you, Nebraska was not prepared for Brandon Kenning not to be the go-to receiver. They readjusted. That's an underclassman that had to play more minutes. So underclassman played more minutes, which is going to help our wide receiver core. Bringing him in now will push some other guys because they say he's he's bigger, he's stronger, could be faster, and probably has better hands. Yeah, you know. So I think I think that was an upgrade for that position. Yeah, but why they did miss on Pete? Uh, uh, you know. But it, I won't say they missed on Pete. They, they were close they, at the they, end. They, they just didn't get him. They, I'll leave they, it at that. They, they, you give yourself an opportunity, and that's it, all you can ask. That's all you can ask for, and he. And, and, and from my understanding, it was between Stanford and Nebraska. Mm-hmm. And so, so you, how could it go wrong with either one of them? Mm-hmm. And, but at the end of the day, I want Nebraska and I want players who wants to be here. Mm-hmm. I don't want someone making a decision to come here and then the next year say, I'm homesick. Oh, I want to try. I want to mm-hmm. go. So I want players who want to be here. Mm-hmm. And, and the players that they got this year want to be here. If Pete wanted to be here, he would be here because mm-hmm. his brother's here. Yeah. So obviously, he felt that he didn't want to be here, he wanted to go. To Stanford, maybe because maybe it was academically. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's something that he wanted to major in that we didn't offer him. Mm-hmm. That's fine. I don't say we missed on him. All right, well, semantics. While they didn't get peaked, they did get two nice uh, offensive line prospects, but those are more inside guys. So I hope it's what we needed inside guys. Yeah, but I, with tackles, I think they're a little thin on. They could have used well, one. Yeah, we might be a little thin, but we, we need it when, when you lose him, when you lose him to Pudo. And then you well, they're losing both starting tackles. I understand, but they felt they had enough guys in the pipeline, mm-hmm. young guys that they feel that they eventually have progressed long, or far enough along to where mm-hmm. they can put it in. But you need those guys in the middle to push, mm-hmm. and that's what they're focusing on. You get those guys this year, and then next year you can go fill in on the outside. Mm-hmm. As long as they have a plan, something yes. to fit in. You mentioned uh, Caputo, and we would be remiss not to mention probably. Not the one of the best things about Nebraska recruiting the past three, four years since Pelini came back, mm-hmm. and that's the walk-on program right. coming back. They have 18 preferred walk-ons coming, and that's a bigger class than they've had in the past few years. Right. And real quick, 60 seconds, talk about the walk-on program and its impact. Well, the walk-on program is, is, is important, and every school out there see, is starting to see that. Why? Because you never know what you're going to get out of your walk-on program. I still remember when we when I played, you had guys like a, a, a Joe McAvicka, a Jeff McAvicka, um, a, a Corey Schlesinger, guys who were walk-ons that came in here and earned scholarships. You had guys like Joe Wilkes, mm-hmm. who was on the offensive line, who turned out to be a, 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 a pretty good offensive yeah. line. You know, so so that's what the walk-on program is for, and that's one thing that I'm glad to see that he got out here battling for it. Mm-hmm. Because those are guys who probably had scholarship offers from other schools would say, no, my, my dreams to play in Nebraska, I want to play in Nebraska, I have a chance. Mm-hmm. And you go, and that's what the walk on program is for. Mm-hmm. And it's I, I, I like it. I like seeing them with 18. I wish they could have got 30. Yeah. Because yeah. it only makes us better. Yeah, one walk on uh, from actually Kansas City, Missouri. His name is King Frazier. Well, he's not he's not related to me. <laughs> Hopefully he turned out to be a king. <laughs> yeah. Well, as spring ball approaches, we'll be talking about what Nebraska mm-hmm. needs to do and needs to kind of improve get tightened on, up. Improve on. Tightened up on in spring ball. Here on Tommy Frazier's X's and O's.